Hey guys, welcome to group chat. We're all three back. Let's go. Let's go. We have a little bit of a teaser today of a masterclass that we've decided D needs to put on. Very kind of you, Drama. And, you know, just to celebrate your success, would love to go to dinner with you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I can't <laughs> wait. And thank you for the compliment. Somehow, oddly, I yes. feel like paying for things now. Yeah, D has a unique <laughs> skill that we're going to talk about. And it could help you also, like, you know, there's some tough times in the economy, maybe some tough times ahead. And I think this skill will really help a lot of our listeners. A lot of listeners say they have gotten some great advice from this show. And I think this this episode is uh, no exception. We're going to talk about Dee's trip to Paris for Men's Fashion Week. We have a full recap of everything going on. So you, know, you get to kind of experience that. And then uh, a lot of news to go over. A lot of fun news today. Nothing negative or scary. Everything's good in, in, in the world of group chat today. And then uh, we have an interview with our friend Rob, aka Ballin, that's been on the episode multiple times. And then we're going to soar you off into the rest of the week with our winners, losers, and content recommendations. So we got a hot episode. We're going to get you ready for, you know, you got two more days until you got a long weekend. So we're going to go ahead and prep you. Or maybe if you're traveling, taking a road trip for the weekend, we got you covered. You guys ready? Fantastic. Let's go. Let's do it. Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, Groove Chat. Cash. Cash. It's a trillion dollars. Hot. Cash. Hey guys! Hey hey hey! D's back. The elite, I'm back. The elite is back. Well, you guys are both elite, and there's an ode to that in our new merch. Did that drop today. It drops today. Anand's member tent T-shirt, his signature design done by Eric Deluxe, is available now on shopnewrepublic.com. So if you want to be a liberal elite. Uh, be very woke, but far from broke. Go to shop New Republic. There's nothing dumb, better. Dumb, dumb your nose down at the poor from yeah. the members' tent. Yeah, act <laughs> like you're with them, but secretly you're thumbing your nose at them. <laughs> uh, okay, available now. That's a hot T-shirt. We got the Beverly Hills colors. Yeah, it's a good shirt. It's a great shirt. Uh, Anand, do you have it yet? Not yet. It's an iconic color wave. Yeah. I expect to see your, um, you know, you and some of your extravagant, like I want like a photo from Yellowstone Club. Yeah. You know, I just throughout the year, I'd like to see a little montage of where you wore your members tent, all the different members tents you were in. Many. Many, many tents. Uh, D, you're back. We thought maybe the pod got too liberal for you. No, you're back. You did ever travel abroad to spread the great word of America. I was pushing America hard. Yeah, I understand. You know, we saw your new hat design. Yeah. Uh, uh, red, white, and blue. And and um, how was it? You went to Paris. I went to Paris. Uh, I had um, timed a bunch of meetings with uh, retailers and brands that I work with out there during Men's Paris Fashion Week. Yeah. Saw lots of pics and content from the, from so the week. So, for folks that are in fashion... Paris Fashion Week has basically become what magic trade show was 10, 15 yeah. years ago. Uh, it's wild. become, yeah, it's it's insane. And it's like, well, in what respect? You're meaning it's the same people that were there 20 years ago and magic have now graduated to luxury? No, it's because oh. it's not just luxury. Everybody, every brand is there now. Like, uh, uh, you it's know. It's just more expensive. Like the hundreds had yeah. a had a showroom in like the Marais sell you know like with retailers like all price point brands basically all the buyers would rather go to paris than go to vegas and so the brands obviously would rather be in paris and so all the retailers that you normally would work with you name a household retailer that's in this industry this 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 particular category of clothing they're all present all the brands are present then what happens is the pr people come the manufacturers come then the riffraff comes, the parties come, and it's become like a moment now. That's so wild. So wild to think about. Like if you really did like a documentary on magic, you know, 2005, yeah. like this is where it graduated to. Yeah. By the way, in 2005, magic, Jay-Z was there. Pharrell was yeah. there. Now they're just in Paris. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Same that's people actually were pretty, there in 2005. That's actually a pretty crazy. Point. 
So it's just that the the world has just moved and like I think specifically in streetwear this segment of um culture is intertwined with luxury and so it just makes for a much cooler sexier experience for buyers and sellers and you know like for example Jeff Staple had a pop up he was probably at Magic and Pool show 20 years ago when I was there Mm -hmm. And he had, he had energy yet. Like it was packed where his uh, cafe was. And, you know, uh, you know, it's just, it, it was really interesting to see all the, the, many of the same people in the industry, but in a different light. Um, and then I think the fascinating thing was one, I mean, Paris is insanely crowded. So not <laughs> only was it men's fashion week, it was also the air show. So, like Everyone flying? thought the city was crowded because of Fashion Week. Sure, the, the Hotel Coast, they like the, the right it restaurants. Cool, fashion. The Paris Air Show, this is a fascinating show. Yeah. It's basically the show for aviation and space. And it is governments buying planes and not just like regular planes. It's also military planes. So every defense contractor is there as well. Yep. I had a... Um, a meeting at one of the hotels uh, like on Avenue Montaigne, which is like where, um, you know, all, all the kind of luxury stores are. And it's just like military people from like all these different countries. Wow. Can you, and, and, and I heard that it, it was so busy and it was like a insane show because there's like the Ukraine war is happening. Planes and fighter jets are yeah, being depleted. Booming. booming. I can't yeah. even imagine. They were like, people were, there was not a hotel to be found. I found some small, um, like, rinky dink hotel in the Marais that, like, I could stay at, and it was still $500 a night. And any hotel that was it, there was no chance you could even get a room. Restaurant reservations, impossible to get anywhere. It wow. was so fucking crowded. I wonder if I mean, the Wagner group out. was represented. Oh, it, Wagner it, was definitely there. It checks out. <laughs> yeah. There was a report today that there's a missile shortage. And Anduril, which we talked about yeah. on the last pod, bought a company out of Mississippi that's supplying these missiles. And everyone thought the U.S. could ramp up production for all these missile requirements with uh, the Ukraine war. And now there's a massive shortage. Yeah. And now people are worried that the U.S. actually doesn't, doesn't have. have enough, uh, you know, missile supply. For Which the, for is probably horseshit. Complete bullshit. Because they just spend, they want us to spend more money. Yeah, we spend. Yeah. We have the, enough missiles. The U.S. military spends annually more individually than the next nine countries combined. I think our military is fine. Yeah. But. The military industry complex exists, and yeah, now they're. Let me tell you, I got to witness the military industry complex. Yeah, I kind of like it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I you mean, could throw on hotel, that American hat, American flag hat, and just switch industries. But your hotel rate and plane airfare had nothing to do with fashion show. It was all the military industry. Complex. The hotel, hundred percent, was. I've been going to this fashion week this time frame for a very, very long time. I've never paid a lot for a hotel. Yeah, it's the Paris. military. Yeah, it is. But here's what's funny: like if we've been spending more, the U.S. government. Than the next nine countries combined for the last thirty years, call yeah. Why do we need more missiles? Why not? I mean, yeah. Number what are we one, doing? You can never the... have enough missiles on it. Yeah, God, this and is a problem two, with you liberal. Can you league. imagine you pussies? You don't want to defend America. Yeah, more missiles. <laughs> yeah. How do you think do you, you get th to have that members tent? Because we've been dropping missiles for decades. <laughs> We defend you in that member's tent. <laughs> yeah. You get to live in your little pussy little life. Because we're just running through missiles like fucking Tic Tacs. <laughs> but it's it's interesting that even the most military supplied countries still feel the need to keep buying more shit. Yes, yeah. you got, yeah. I'm sure the accounting and the inventory, and like there's probably warehouses of missiles that were just left in Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure like it is probably horrendous. When you so my it. point is there's all these scare reports in the last 12 hours about shortage of missiles. I think we're fine. Yeah, but it's 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 propaganda so that we can go spend more money. Yeah. Because like, you know, it's like big pharma, military. And these are very well run machines. Yeah. They're good at what it's they do. Good. And so anyways, going back to it, um, 
inflation in Paris is just completely out of control. Oh, really? I thought you were going to say yeah. non like didn't matter. No, I mean, I... Give us some prices. I, I'm going to... Most insane price is tequila. Really? Uh, so, you had I an was, expensive trip. No, I didn't pay for anything. I had people paying for <laughs> me the whole time. You didn't take your wallet. <laughs> I, I, I literally... I think I paid for maybe two drinks the entire week. Yeah, Meals? Not bad. Not a meal. Good. Not a meal that I had to whip out my credit card. You could put on a course on this. I think you have a skill here. Yeah, there should be a master I class. I do pull out the yeah. wallet. I do the fake, you, you do know. The fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how, what's, your, what's your move? How far in advance is the counterparty taking out the credit card before you do the fake pull out? I'll, I'll pull it out first. But he's good at making but, like but little he, comments throughout dinner. Like, ah, oh, you, you, you had a great year. This will be on you, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So what, what so you, you basically He's like hype their you hype their ego up so yes. they feel like they have to pay. Yes. yes. Like Smart. I saw that runway show. Yeah. We'll take care so of this one. That's and then he pulls literally the wallet out. that's one of my things. So, you know, it's a good tactic for people to know. You keep complimenting your dinner counterparty. Yeah. 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 They and, feel good. I and literally the, text people like and I'm and I do it in a joking way. Where are you taking me to dinner tonight? And they're like, where do you want to go? And I feel like you see to- someone do something good, like in the press, you know, yeah. a lot of people would say, hey, congrats. That was really great. You say, congrats. That was really great. Where are you taking me to dinner? Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly so you plan what I do. in advance. So let me tell you the great places to go to dinner in Paris. <laughs> if you don't have to pay. If you don't have to, no you don't budget. Have to pay. Yeah. So um, there was a, a, a party, uh, the brand Rude threw, and they did it at Plaza Atene. And I go to the bar to get a drink. I ordered Casa Dragones. They had Casa Dragones in 1942. I'm not a 1942 guy, so I ordered Casa Dragones. They're same price point? It, Casa Dragones is much cheaper. Like, um, in, in a, you could go to the store and get a bottle for 75 bucks. So a 1942 glass in LA is what, 40, 50 bucks? 40, 50 bucks. 1942, which I ran into a bunch of buddies. They all ordered 1942. I see it comes and it was 150 euros a drink. For a Are single shot. One shot. 150 euros. So it's triple, more than triple. Because it was 160 bucks, basically. Yeah. 165. That is insane. insanity. Insanity. Then that's um, a bottle of 1942 at the liquor store. No, exactly. Literally a bottle. I think it's 149. Wow. And I um, um, ordered Casa Dragones, which is like a 70, the, 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 this version of it. It's like a $70 bottle at a liquor store in California. 125 bucks. Euros. A glass. A glass. So then, God. which is nuts. And then we went to Hotel Coast. Hotel Coast is like, basically where everyone hangs out during fashion week it's a hotel restaurant and i go to dinner one night with one of my friends there and he's like i want to get drinking let's get drinking he starts ordering doubles of 1942 so he's 320 dollars a glass 320 dollars a glass okay i mean we we must have drank three four each before we even had dinner so he's out like two grand before dinner yes and then we went to... No wonder you, you can't even do Andy the fake credit the card. Yeah, I can't even afford it. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, hey, I got to be honest here. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, this is way out of my budget. I drank $1,000 of tequila tonight. I, this has to be on you. <laughs> way more than 1000 That's the funniest part. <laughs> and then, so the, the kind of spots everyone was hanging out was Hotel Coast. And there's a, a restaurant called Lulu, which is... Um, in right near the Louvre uh, Museum. Hot. If you go to Paris, I would go to this place. During the day, it is sick. It's like- It's a an, restaurant or a lounge or what is it? It's a restaurant like in the middle of the grass, you know, and, and like call it a hundred yards away is the Louvre. You can't see it from there. Hard but, to get in or can anyone make a rest? Um, it, you can, it, it's hard to get in, but like your concierge at your hotel should be able to call and make a rest there. Incredible place. But- same, like, you know, truffle pizza, you know, 75 euros or 100 euros. It's just even the coffee, like I found like this American woman that opened a coffee shop and, you know, getting iced coffee in France is kind of hard unless you go to like a specialty coffee shop. So I, 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 want, I drink iced coffee only and it was like eight euros. 
So do you think the prices reset in three weeks after all these people go? No, I think... Because you've had this like kind of wave, right? You had the film festival. Yeah. You had Formula One in Monaco. You had... No. The, Fashion I, week and it kind of all culminated in the last. So I went week. to all, all the like I went for runs and I would go to like the touristy spots like Eiffel Tower or the museum and all these places, and it was packed with tourists, like families with kids. Yes, families with kids, just you know, good old Americans. How are they affording this stuff? I, look, I think if you booked it far enough in advance, I'm sure you you paid a little bit of a cheaper and price. You bring like a snackable. Yeah, I mean, the free, the, 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 the free breakfast at every hotel was popping. People were, I honestly don't know how people afforded it because like everything was like insanely expensive. Every restaurant was expensive. Um, and and even, even Ubers were so fucking expensive. Put it like this, the traffic was so bad that after my first two hours there, I did not take an Uber till I left town to the airport i biked everywhere i literally had a line bike and i was flying around paris on a bike very and safe that's not normal that's not normally what you would do no normally i would just take uber everywhere i mean traffic is bad there i mean i think the, the interesting thing is is like we talk about traffic in la traffic in other cities like new york city paris yeah. they're unbearable because yeah. you're talking like at least la we're going 10 miles it's just the la you're spread like, out that's the only difference Yes, here it's like three miles and it says 35 minute Uber, 30 minute walk, 18 minute bike ride or whatever. Yeah. And so, uh, so I recommend definitely if you go, if you're going to Paris this summer, hop on a bike. It's so easy. So you're telling me all these A-list celebrities, LeBron, Kim Kardashian. They're all on bikes. Like they're just sitting in hour traffic. <laughs> yes, they're yeah. sitting in hour traffic. It's un, it's unbelievable. They have their SUV caravans yeah. taking them yeah. from fashion show to dinner yeah just like cool I'll just sit for an hour yeah. yeah and like i got caught up in the pride parade traffic even with the bike there was traffic that day what was a lot going on like? temperature was warm not unbearable you not unbearable like you could walk and you'd be fine yeah. uh what you know what's noticeably missing chinese people interesting mm. which is very like not normal I have thoughts on that. Probably have to share it offline. Really? Why are you afraid of CCP? I want our TikTok clips to keep going viral. That's fine. Mm. You think they're uh, not allowed? Yeah. You think their their money's locked down? Yeah. You can't go to the Louis Vuitton store with no money. Ah, that's true. So, uh, Goyard headlines, uh, Hermes headlines, certain LV stores headline. So what's the demo of the line? Uh, mixed, mixed. Like young people, like cool kids, or no? No, yeah. I'm just saying younger. Ethnicity. Yeah. ethnicity. There were some Asian people, but it was pretty mixed in terms. So of I was told, um, and I'm curious. Well, you didn't go to London on this trip, right? Yeah. So apparently, London's a ghost town. This is anecdotal. So someone in London that's listening, I'm sorry, but there's no VAT refund yeah. in London, so you can't shop. You can't shop. So the Euro, you can still do the VAT refund. Yeah. So there's a lot of shopping tourism yeah. from the Middle East, China, uh, Southeast Asia, India, and you save like 30% on these luxury goods that you would, you want to buy Chanel, Louis Vuitton, yeah. you just go to the airport and get 30%. So you, yeah. you choose your vacation. I think it's like 10% of the VAT, but it's also priced cheaper because the goods are made in the region. I think with, I guess with the US dollar... Sorry, the U.S. dollar is thirty percent. You're right with a ten percent fat. I don't yeah. know what their currencies are. Yeah, but the U.S. dollar is actually like thirty percent. Yeah. So, a lot of people are just choosing their vacations based on shopping. Yeah. And they'd rather shop in Paris than shop in London because I had a close friend who's in London. He's like, it's a ghost town. Wow, Paris was the most crowded I've ever seen it, and I've gone in summers for years, and I could not believe like it was every restaurant, every hotel lobby, every, like, it was just people. Yeah. And this was a friend who was there last week in London. Yeah. So timing Compared, is exactly where. Yeah. It was, I, I mean, I could not believe how many people there. And it's just very expensive. It's just not, you know, you got to go when you have other rich friends there. Otherwise it's not as fun. Yeah. I think we should do like a well lit, you know, like the master <laughs> classes and it's just D like how to. <laughs> 
how to get a free meal. How to be likable and get a free meal. Yeah. Yeah. That's the masterclass. It is a masterclass. Yeah. I'm a, it's unbelievable. You're like uh, Matt Damon in- uh, Talented Mr. Ripley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just so all you, in man. all, any other takeaways? I mean, fashion's on fire. That whole world yeah, is on look, fire. I, I met with a lot of brands. I'll tell you that business is soft. Yep. It is not, you know, very- Even at the high end? I met with some luxury companies. What they said was there are pockets that are, they said American luxury consumers holding strong, um, Europe pockets, China is very slow to recover. Like they're not seeing what they thought would be the bounce back. And they think the next three to five years is not going to have the growth they've had in the last five years. And so they are cautious. And then you just talk to, you know, brands at smaller brands at different price points. And everyone's, everyone was like pretty cautious. They were like, yeah, you know, business is tough. Like we have things that are working and countries and retailers that are working. But like, I didn't meet anyone where they said like, oh, it's booming. I think I met one brand that said it was just like absolutely on fire, but I don't know the scale at which their brand is. But it didn't feel like it was like the good times are rolling. The only two things that seem immune is luxury hotels and travel. Yeah. And so yeah, it's weird that you would say like, it seems like business is soft for everyone there. But when you are there looking around, people are yeah. spending money like crazy. So I had a conversation with a retailer yesterday, like a mass market retailer. And they were saying that they are seeing a noticeable pause in travel related spend so mm. luggages things like that they saw that like it was booming to like three months ago and it just stopped so that means travel should calm down in the fall i'll tell you i saw i looked at a flight thir 30 days out on this on delta and it was 30 percent cheaper 30 days out so i think by september you should be able to i had the worst call of all time yeah i said january of this year travel will be cheap and it's has been more expensive than ever the last yes. six months. Yeah. It's, it's so unbelievable. Weird. I just cannot, when I like look around, I look at the flights and I look at the restaurants and I'm just like, does everyone just have so much money? Yeah. yeah I really I mean, think I, there's I, like, I, I would say uh, in LA, just restaurants that I've gone to that I go to regularly. If I were to think about the bill, 2019 to 2023 it's double for the exact same order. yeah i did i did meet someone that you guys know young guy goes out parties dinners he's like a very social guy and i just asked him just anecdotally we were at lunch i was like what's your like uh social life like, like now like when you go to lunch and dinners and parties he's like he's like you know there's no more someone taking care of the whole bill like a group of 10. No one does that anymore. Aver There's a lot of split bills. And then our average check size is much lower. And he's like a late 20s, you know, very social person. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. I mean, the bills are insane. I mean, just if Amanda and I go to dinner and I see the bill versus what it would have been four years ago, it's double. It's Yeah, it's double. I I'm curious, Does at any point, are restaurants going to lower prices again? I don't I think so. They're addicted to it now. Yeah. Especially and unless traffic, you know, demand goes way down. Wage costs have gone up. Yeah. You talk to any restaurateur, the minimum wage, it's seventeen dollars is I think to get a like a busser. Yeah. An hour. Yeah. That used to probably be like eight or nine. Yeah. The one thing I did spend money on um in, in Paris was I had to be at a meeting at a certain time when I landed. And I was nervous about how long the immigration line and customs was going to be and then getting to a car. Uh, I got a greeter. Um, it was 150 euros. I got from my plane to the, Where did they grab you from the- Literally off the plane. Okay. From the plane to a taxi. The guy's like, do not take an Uber. Take this taxi. They're local. They'll get you there faster. The greeter tells me, 12 minutes. Wow. Wow. Because that would you have go taken through like a hour. special line. Yeah, like he just there's a special line. He just grabs you to the front. So are you seeing the crowds in immigration? I'm waving right by them. And they just take you to the front. Take you to the right to the front. So it's clear, yeah. Okay. I That's know celebrities good. do that. You I mean, if you fly internationally, you should always do this. This is insane. 
Yeah, especially with kids. Jeez. Can you do it yeah, at like any like, major airport? Yeah, so every talk, airport does. Every it, right? airport has it. Um, I actually, um, I've had friends do it. Anthony does it all the time. So we did it in Mexico City, and then I hit up his uh, guy that he works with, and I was like, "Give me the guy that you would do in Paris," and then I called him. How quick were you in Mexico City? Mexico City? Uh, I don't know. One minute. Really? One minute. Literally one it's minute. It's a busy airport. <laughs> yeah, it was one minute. You just go to the front. Yeah, yeah. go. Whatever. Get That'd out. be amazing. When you come home, this is really niche, but when you come home from Cabo, it's yeah. always like, because that's such a short plane ride and you can and get you're waiting. jammed at LAX with like- But don't you, know, you have global it, entry? Do you have global entry? I do, but over COVID it expired. So the last time uh, I went, I got jammed. But if you get stuck with like- you know, there's a couple flights yeah. coming in from China oh, yeah, and uh, Tokyo just landed. Like you oh, can be in, in China the airport. Uh, blame China. China again. Uh. <laughs> Got to go get those missiles, huh? China. Uh, you can um, be in the airport yeah. longer than your well, flight. Well, you know? here, here's another one. I landed in Minnesota or Minneapolis on Sunday night. Big international transfer. I got, the a, a I got off the plane. Hub. I got off the plane at one. Global entry, which they don't even scan anymore. You just, it's complete from your eyes, your face, which is so fast. And then my bag was already out there. I was in an Uber in 10 minutes and I didn't even have anything special there. I just had global entry. Wow. So drama, I had to redo this too, just to tip for you, just reapply and you automatically get it. I didn't have to go back and interview because mine expired oh. during COVID too. Okay, thank you. It was really simple. <laughs> Yeah, everything expired. My TSA pre-check, all of it during COVID. I didn't yeah, realize no, I'm, until I'm I traveled. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Okay, good call. Okay. Um, okay, is that it? Good recap. Good recap. Uh, uh, yeah, but yeah, Paris bike, and you know, hopefully you're traveling with someone with a lot of money. Yeah, I really think you should do that masterclass. I think our listeners could really benefit. Benefit. It's it's uh, really how you word it. It's the complimenting. No, you do it in a. You have a. It's an art the way you do it. You do it in yeah. a way that's um, like the person feels, you make them feel really good about themselves. And then it's like the least they can do is pay. And also if they don't pay, <laughs> it kind of kills the whole facade that you just created of them. Yeah. You know, like you like the way this story feels. You got to keep it going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Over complimenting is good. Be extremely nice. Yeah. There's no downside. I'll, I'll have to, I have to give a shout out to Rich from Fashion Nova. He really took care of me all week. So that's, he <laughs> oh, was your sponsor. Yeah. He yeah. was your sponsor. I was yeah. basically I was a Fashion Nova. Yeah, you're I was an basically Instagram a Fashion Nova model. model. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was a model. Yeah. All right. Um, so more news that's actually similar to what we were just talking about. Um, Airbnb. Uh, you know, I guess this is where I want to start this is during like the COVID time and even kind of coming out of that, one of the big things, so like there was the NFT craze, everyone was getting rich off of NFTs, everyone was getting rich off of, you know, day trading. There was, there was kind of this trend of things that all went away. And one yep. of those things was there was countless TikToks and kind of short form content videos about how you're all stupid and what you should be doing is doing Airbnbs. You should be buying property. You should be airbnb them. Here's how yep. I do it. I now have 10 Airbnbs. I am printing <laughs> cash. You guys are all idiots. Um, it was this huge kind of gold rush. It seems that that has officially collapsed. I mean, I wouldn't even say it's like having a tough time. It seems pretty devastating. Yeah. So there's a um, chart that came out that said, uh, revenues are down nearly 50% in cities like Phoenix and Austin. So the biggest drops are Sevierville, Tennessee, 47% drop from May of 2022 to May of 2023. This is revenue wow. um, kind of per listing probably. Um, Phoenix, Austin, Myrtle Beach, San Antonio, uh, Orlando, Florida was number 15 with a 35% drop. So all that telling me is is that travel to these markets has slowed because now you can go anywhere, right? Like you're not going to Austin, Texas for the weekend when you can go to Paris or when you can go to New York or when you can go to these other cities. So I think the I don't want to say like I, I think it's hard to say that Airbnb 
has completely collapsed. I think it's more appropriate to say the lo COVID locations that Airbnb was booming on have collapsed. And I bet you, if you looked at certain other markets, they've exploded. Yeah. So I think there's two different things that are pretty notable about this is that one, um, hybrid work is real. So I know work from home is still the majority of like a lot of companies in major cities, but they still require you one to two days a week in the office. You got to show up. You got to show up. So this like fantasy of living in Idaho and working from home like he could have done in 2021 is over. Yeah. So you have this like, you actually have to be kind of close to wherever your corporate headquarters are. Yeah. And that's all these which, major cities. Which makes sense because you have not seen rents collapse in any of the major cities. No, New York's rent is at an all-time high. Yeah. And office is at 50% occupancy. Yeah, LA is probably at an all-time high too. I'm sure LA rents at all-time high and LA occupancy in office is probably at an all-time low. Yeah. yeah. So, but you still have to show up kind of one to two days a week and yeah. do your FaceTime. The second thing is in these communities... It's that the numbers are kind of staggering. So in Arizona, for example, that there's like a million Airbnbs and only 500,000 homes for sale. Wow. So wow. if they start, if those Airbnbs are underwater and if they start selling, it's going to crater the market. And this is the dynamic in all these like kind of tertiary communities. And the other thing is if you bought a home in 2021 when your board ape was hot, your crypto was hot, your stocks were hot and thinking like, oh, I have another hustle. Yeah. I already hit it on these three hustles. I'm going to buy some real I'm estate. I'm going to buy some real estate and get another cash flow stream. You're underwater. Yeah. Yeah. I also think that the, so we won't know until we see Airbnb's overall numbers. You're totally right. But the, I think there was also like Airbnb kind of made a mistake where in the beginning of Airbnb, it was like, oh my God, this is so nice. You can go to, the perception was you go to another city, you stay in a house as opposed to a hotel, hotels suck. Look at all the nice amenities. You have your little soaps and all that stuff there. It's so great. But there was really this trend of like, Airbnb suck. Like you can't make a mess. They ask you to pay a cleaning yeah. fee. Then they ask you to take the trash out before you leave. And then they ask you to, and it was like this super high maintenance experience. And I don't know whether that was just big on social media or whether it had an actual financial impact, but I feel like there was like kind of a like, Hey, hotels aren't so bad. Like you kind of go make a mess, leave. They make the bed every night. Yeah. There's like no rules at a hotel. Like we're having like a family reunion this weekend and we were looking for an Airbnb and like, Ventura County somewhere. And it was like, I don't know how many people. It was like 15 people of us. 17. 17 with people. With kids, yeah. With kids. No Airbnb would even take us because of the kids. Yeah. Zero. They said, do you have any small children? They're like, no, you can't come. You can't yeah. eat anywhere but the kitchen. You can't do this. You can't do that. It's ridiculous. And you yeah. know, you're responsible for your own laundry. If you're there that long, you make your own bed, you know, hotel, you just fucking throw everything everywhere. Yeah, you go out disaster. for lunch, you come back and it's beautiful. <laughs> it's and no exactly. one says anything. You can eat yeah. upside down I I under the bed if you want. And no one says anything. There's no, no, no thought of taking out the trash. And I, I don't know whether that was just you know, it looked bad, but it didn't actually affect their numbers. But I think that has to p play a part in this. Yeah. I also yeah. think like if you're a budget traveler, I think Airbnb still makes sense. But if you have the means to pay for an experience, there's no way an Airbnb makes more sense than a hotel, a the high-end hotel. The convenience. Yeah. It's really hard. Because you have someone that's getting you food. You need, you forgot a toothbrush. Someone yeah. shows up with a toothbrush. Yeah. You forgot yeah. toothpaste. Room service. You know, all the room service. You go down, like Drama said, and just leave your room like a mess. Come a back mess. and it's perfect. And yeah. nobody says a word to you. They don't even judge you. They've seen worse. Yeah. I just think, I also think during COVID, Airbnb's made a lot of sense because you're alone. You know, you're not around a bunch of other people. You're not in elevators. You know, you could just go on these little trips. So I don't know. Like I said, I don't think, we don't have overall Airbnb numbers, I don't think. But like, there are definitely, I would imagine these were like Austin is probably an area where a lot of people took a risk, made mm -hmm. an investment, got their Airbnb or their multiple Airbnbs, and they probably just got creamed. How about these tax evaders that went to Austin? It's 117 degrees there right yeah. now. 
Six months, one day. That's well, I think you're rule. probably back. You're probably if you're if you're a tax evader, you're probably doing your five months in LA. Yeah, yeah and exactly. then the California State Board is going to still come after you. So you're going to stick in 117 degree weather and pay your taxes. You're going to melt your money away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm curious how that will age. Yeah, you know, it'll like age lo- terribly. I know for a fact it'll. That's one of my like bank um, prediction, bank it uh, predictions. They yeah. will absolutely come after every single person that in 21, 20, that left to Florida, Texas for those. But if they stayed there, it's different. I don't think. No, because the money was made the 10 years prior and California is going to sue your ass for it. It depends. But what about your you income left? in 22? Like, yeah. Sure. If your income go forward. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's going to be protected. Oh, you're saying but they're trying happened, to evade previous they, earnings. They, yeah. Basically, they were like, oh, company's about to go public. Uh, I'm going to Florida. Company goes to public. You make five hundred million dollars. They're coming for that because that, how does that work? You made that money in California. Yeah, it's yeah. We're 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 gonna see we're it gonna play see out. It. You th- like you if think I moved to Florida and in six months sold a business, I can't. They're coming. I'm after still you. L.A., uh, California, whatever. Long term. No, company. but I mean, look, the law hasn't. There's no precedent yet. Got but it, I don't it, think it. the California State Board is that stupid to be like. Yeah. Oh yeah, you made all your money in California, but when you actually liquidated it, it was yeah. in Florida. We we can't touch it. That's so it's never I mean, really been a problem sense. that needed to be addressed. Now it is. No, because because it's never been at scale. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But That's interesting. Well, I'll give you. I'll give you. I, I'm curious. I I I don't know the the migration to Texas and then the re migration back to California. I've heard that. I have not heard people who went to Florida come back. Florida people are all happy. Florida man is happy. Good. Yeah. Stay there. Florida man's happy. And then pay yeah. your California taxes. Austin man. They may not. Austin man they has may some not. regrets. Austin man with 117 degrees, you got to be a little worried. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun for a I, while. Yeah. Okay. How about this? Um, I don't know if these people moved to a new state to collect their cash, but Case Text, which is, uh, I think we've talked about them, right? It's an AI legal, um, you know, tech for... Uh, using AI on like legal documents, uh, l- legal work, stuff like that. They have sold for six hundred and fifty million dollars. Hope they in went cash. to Austin first. So they've got bought by Ro- Reuters, and we haven't talked about it. We've talked about a company I'm invested in, which is also in a similar space. So was it in the legal here. space, is that why we talked about <laughs> yeah, it? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. called Even Up. And I actually asked uh, a person in this space. Were these private data sets or public data sets that they were aggregating? From everything yeah. I've read, I read TechCrunch, I read everything. It seems like their only edge was they had early access to chat GPT-4. Yeah. So this might have been a bag that would not bag. exist yeah. in two wow. years because everyone would have had this access yeah. now. And I was told 15 million of run rate ARR. And oh they get a God. $650 million bag. Oh my, oh my God. God. Do that multiple. I don't want to. And, and, and how old are they for their, their six ARR years. is what? Two? I think they've been around for like six or seven years, I think. But do you think Maybe they got more. a boost off of this chat GPT? I think they just saw growth and Reuters probably was like, we have no, we need to like keep up. Yeah. I mean, you saw there was another acquisition Mosaic that happened. Mosaic ML, two years old. If they had one point three billion dollars, if they're, six, yeah. if they're six years old and they had fifteen million ARR this year, essentially, like what that was, means they did nothing before. Yes, yeah. yes. What they do for the last five years? <laughs> I oh think they God. might even be ten years old if I read the article right. Sorry, I'm gonna quickly look. Wow, that might be the best bag collection. Well, I mean, I think the, you know, there's the other acquisition. 2013, they were founded. So 10 years old, they did no business. They got early access to an application they did not create. Yes. Did a million bucks a month and sold for (laughs) for 650. This is like when broadcast.com, Mark Cuban sold. No, it's similar to like, yeah, broadcast.com. It's also like uh, direct to consumer. When uh, Bonobo sold for four hundred million, it's a worthless company. Yeah. Uh, what's the company? No, these are more like the dot com because Bonobos was doing revenue at least. These guys did. They had one one million dollar a month. Case Tech had one one million dollar. Like month. Dollar Shave Club should not have sold for a billion. Sure, but I, it's not the direct consumer. It's literally dot com bust. Those companies, 
Dollar Shave Club, these people were doing tens of millions of dollars of revenue a month. These companies are not. The company Mosaic ML that got bought by Databricks for $1.3 billion has 60 employees. $21 uh, million dollars per employee. Pretty good. Oh, my God. There's going to be some just Two ungodly bags. You got to get your bag if you're an AI right now. Yeah. If you this have been smart enough <laughs> to be working in the world of AI for, you know, how long have you had to get this education, do all this stuff, 10 years, whatever, get your bag now. It's it. It's it's going to... Because it's going to cool to this, like reality of like, okay... What's, we've all burnt a lot of money. What's really a value here? We already know there's just going to be a wipeout. It's no, like so it's 100% going to happen. I think yeah. leading into the next topic is actually really relevant to what we're just talking about. Yep. Open AI uh, engineer with 10 years experience is rumored to be making a million dollars at Open AI. I've actually heard the numbers more like 1.2 to 1.3. This is full package. Full stock. package with stock and, Bonuses. and cash. Yeah. yeah. So if you're... There's a shortage of these people with this talent skill yeah. set in the world. So if you're Reuters, what AI engineer is going to go to Reuters? Nobody. Literally nobody. Zero. So they have to overpay to even get the talent skill set to even help the organization stay alive and not be extinct. Yeah. So you're going to see massive acquisitions in the space, not because case text matters, like 15 million of AR over 10 years. Like, yeah, it's just terrible business but yeah. they're like we know we need to have ai engineers how do we do it and you have these companies flush with cash that are just going to keep buying and buying yeah. companies just, for numbers yeah, yeah. that are going to sound stupid to all of us but they yeah. probably don't have an alternative yeah well because like if you were going to hire 50 open ai engineers that's 50 million dollars a year right and they all just saw oh i could use these skills find a niche and there's $650 million waiting for me. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to like, I would imagine if you're one of these people that is entrepreneurial at all, if you have a little bit of that in your DNA, you have to realize like, Hmm, I could probably collect an easy hundred million. Yeah. Just by putting the right fucking story behind this shit. Yeah. AI story. Easy. The, Good it's for them. It's going to be mean, the if, biggest cash grab since, yeah. to me, the dot com. Yeah, you just have you get out. You're great. You got to get out. Like case text, case text probably would have been case a zero. text. Dinner's on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If Congratulations, you ever, case text. Case text. Yes. I'm a huge fan. Huge, if anyone huge, huge this, fan. If anyone Let's from case text Cabo. hears this and reach out, the group just know chat guys would you. love to go to Cabo. We yeah. love you guys. I mean, you guys are qu it. the quintessential entrepreneurs. You know, people dream of what you guys have built. Yeah, visionaries. I'd love to have visionaries with a, with a guy or gal like that. I'd love, love to have some hundred and fifty dollar uh, nineteen forty two <laughs> with a guy or gal like that. So, <laughs> given the recent fundraises that have happened with certain companies, and then obviously now we're seeing exits in the last week: one for six hundred fifty million, one for one point three billion. The number of texts I've gotten privately: we're back. Yeah. <laughs> From tech people. Yeah. yeah. I get that. Because <laughs> like, these are stupid deals. Yeah. Yes. How would you not feel that way? The stupidity is back. Even though it's like yeah. really in one specific area, it's the same old thing. God, I just want that to happen to me. Yeah, that I'm back. Just be like, man, D's a fucking idiot. I can't believe you got this. I would love yeah. for you to sell for a billion and just roast the outcome on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. These idiots, can you believe Reuters just gave me $650 million? Lunch on me, finally. <laughs> yeah, it's, there's going to be a lot of wild stories, I think, um, Yeah, in that area. How about this? Wild stories. There's this Wall Street Journal article about, you know, we've talked about this a little bit. Um, it's fascinating, but the use of mushrooms, LSD, ketamine, uh, it's just sort of more popular than ever. I think it's always been kind of popular in like the tech world. I would say more so than, you know, a lot of other worlds. But yeah, I think that's Steve Jobs driven. Like everyone yeah. read, you know, knew that he took LSD in India and, you know, envisioned the iPhone. So then every other dork thought that yes. could be them. 
And even when you used to watch the Silicon Valley, it was a big part of that storyline. I'm just saying it's kind of been tied to that for a while. But, you know, there's this article about how then, you know, microdosing that phenomenon came up. It seemed like when I picture it, I picture like, you know, 50 percent of people in Silicon Valley are just microdosing on one of these drugs. I would say 99 uh, percent. OK, even better uh, throughout <laughs> any given day. And but, we, you know. We have the story about yeah, it. Yeah, so the Wall Street Journal put out an article saying, you know, mushrooms, LSD, ketamine is what drives Silicon Valley. I can fact check it. True. <laughs> I mean, there's, driving there's just the story. meaning that they just- Meaning that's what they, people in that industry do. Do. Yeah, yeah. Not that it's driving the innovation. Like in LA, yeah. we have I mean, matcha, <laughs> we have lattes. In yes. Silicon Valley, they have I can tell mushrooms. you, like, Barry's Boot Camp drives LA. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> Soul Cycle and matcha. I would say of the people that I'm extremely close with, not close with, that are somewhat tangentially connected to technology, it's a nine out of 10 that do one of these, you know, magic. Yeah. Magic, things. magic substances. Okay. okay. Well, hey, I them. would say it's working for them. So go ahead and pop one of your favorite um, hallucinogens and think of the next AI idea. And, there and you it's go. spilling over to sports. You saw Aaron Rodgers talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, was at a conference in Denver talking about psychedelics? Yeah. And everyone's criticizing him. And he's like, well, after I did ayahuasca, I did 45 touchdowns and got the MVP. Yeah. So there you go. There's a wave of well, young I don't athletes. Think the, the, I don't think they're <laughs> he's correlated. Connecting yeah. He's connecting. I'm just yeah. saying. That's what he's not, saying. Uh, not all the uh, the practice. And <laughs> yeah. I don't know if the but... LSD and the iPhone were connected either, but it started a yeah. revolution. I don't know Is this. He... Do you guys know this? I might be just kind of old and square here, but like mushrooms... Like the young folks here are like eating mushroom chocolate. Oh my like god. Skittles. Yeah. yeah like it's like it you, know, you want to get a you want to get a gallon of water in because that's like what I've been trying to do daily. I think yeah. people are like making sure they get a gallon of mushrooms. In. <laughs> yeah, you get like your gram or whatever much the measurement is. What's like it can you just buy it? Like where how come everyone has mushroom chocolate in their bag? Yeah, I think you can buy it. It's not you can buy it anywhere. At you any, can buy uh, dispensary. it dispensary. Medmen or the illegal dispensaries. Uh yeah, I'm pretty sure. I've, I mean, everyone has it, so it must be everywhere. Easy to get. Yeah, those cans, those mushroom cans. I don't know where that. That means it must be sold at dispensary. Well, that's yeah. uh, that's marijuana. They do mushroom now. Yeah, there's mushroom. Can I was at a Silicon Valley party about with the mushroom brand cans. Can? I think he's saying like a can of mushroom beverage, no, right? A, a can yeah. of mushroom bever- beverage. Yeah. I was at a person's birthday party who's from Silicon Valley out here, and there was beverages with mushrooms in it. I mean, a young, just like a, open it like a Coke. A young woman that works in the creative industry that I was around the other day in her early 20s looks like a, you know, you'd see her walking through Air One, tipped over her purse the other day, and actual like mushrooms that looked like mushrooms in a bag yeah. <laughs> tumbled out. It's like anything from the can, mushrooms the chocolate, the actual. Mushrooms are having the their actual, moment. Yeah. There's no question. Mushrooms are having their moment. Yeah. Yeah, mushrooms are hot. Well, hey, Silicon Valley has led our innovation for the last decade. So, who knows? Okay. Well, there you go. There's some inspo for the, uh, you know, what? this is a really good in, uh, informational episode. We taught people how to get a free meal yep. uh, and drink. Uh, we taught you the next area where you could just catch a quick 500 million bucks in like six months. Yep. And we told you how to maybe alter your consciousness uh, so that you can come up with all these ideas. Yep. There you go. Welcome to group chat. Real quick, we're going to do winners, losers, and content. But before we do that, we have an interview. Who do we got? We got our friend, uh, Robert, a.k.a. Ballin, who's, Ballin. you know, brought, bought, brought a lot of interesting things by the podcast uh, over the years. And so he's got a, really for the business owners, pay attention here because uh, it's, it's important. So let's get into it. All right. We're going to cut to our good friend. Rob, a.k.a. Ballin. Um, if you listen to this podcast for a while, Robert's come around a lot of times with actually really good stuff. Yep. He brought some meat sometime. That was hot. Uh, fixed some people's credit. That was hot. Um, now, uh, and, and I'm sure a lot of people have heard about this, and I've experienced this painful, dreadful process myself. Um, ERC, yep. Employment Retention Credit, so interesting, Robert's working with a company that obviously helps people file it. Right. And um, how'd you get involved with these guys? Well, um, thanks for having me on again, yeah. guys. Um, you know, one of the things is 
I work with NFL players and I bring brands to them, off field brand deals. So with those brand deals, you know, these companies, they, they might ask me certain questions. Hey, do you know this guy or do you know this? And one of them happened to ask me if I knew anything about the ERC. Um, and I actually said I do because we're working with an ERC company uh, with the NFL guys. And so I sent him over there and uh, he ended up qualifying and getting funded. You know, I, I mean, he was a little bit scared about it because I guess he just didn't know. Yeah. You well, know? it's interesting is, is people don't realize if you retained um, full time employees during the COVID years, which is 2020, 2021, uh, you are eligible for a tax credit, which is literally cash, that um, you can then get returned to you. Right. So I, you know, I heard about it. You know, beginning of last year, we started the process of filing. We filed, um, I think, last summer, uh, early fall. I bet you haven't got it. Have you got? Did you get it? No. I haven't gotten. Oh. Um, I did get a notice that a small portion of it, because it comes by quarters of you file. Right. It's going to take me till next summer to get all the money. Next summer. Because right now it's taking anywhere between six to 18 months right. is the range. And it's a lot of money that we're owed. And it's it's been like a very, very non-transparent process yeah and then what's funny is is i was looking because for us it's kind of like found money we need it the business needs it it would be great to get it but like i'd be like uh, i'd pay i'd pay a fee to get it a little faster and you said these guys do that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah waiting uh 12 to 18 months is not hot <laughs> no i mean especially well, it's actually three years yeah because you kept them on when you shouldn't have kept them on yeah and then now you're waiting for the reimbursement. Right. Yeah, we did this good deed by keeping all these employees, <laughs> but we haven't been fucking rewarded. Yeah. Um, so what's the name of the company? Yeah, it's um, ERC Straight Line. And one of the things too, D, is is like, you know, 60% of the companies are told that they don't qualify, yeah. but they actually really do. So, you know, there's a, for an example, they actually did a, a company and they were told they didn't qualify. And mind you, this was large. And um, they ended up qualifying and they ended up getting $9.7 million back. I mean, Jeez. that's fucking huge. So just think about the payroll he was using in yeah. 2020 and 2021. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes people are, are told they don't qualify or they think that they don't qualify. I mean, it literally, it's super simple. If you have five or more W-2 employees in the years 2020 and 2021, you could most likely qualify. Yeah. And I mean, it, you can get ten to $26,000 back. That's per employee. Per employee. Yeah. And you don't have to pay it back. Yeah. Like they're giving it's, it's it to giving you it, yeah, it's, for, for keeping your people It's part staff. of Sleepy Joe's, uh, you know, bills he passed. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it works. <laughs> I, mean, it was at, I mean, it started with Trump. I mean, the Lakers asked for PPP loans. Yeah. They're worth like $10 billion. Yeah. Yeah. And they got it. Yeah. Why not? They're so, handing out the money. And so, so the, the interesting thing is, is I think people like to your point, they don't, a lot of people think it's a scam. They don't know what it is, but I'll tell you it's real because- I know one of our good friends got millions of dollars back recently. And I know tons of friends that have filed and gotten money back. For it sure. just takes time. Yeah, it takes time. And I, I and think there's a process to filing. So I heard the 2020 stuff, the deadline is this Friday. And then the 2021 stuff, there's still more time. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely more time. But one of the things that, you know, that to talk about that really helps is they can actually fund it. So if you, if you had qualified last summer, you were talking about, you could have had that 30 days later. And that's usually, that's one of the great things that they do is they're able to fund it for you 30 days later after you qualify. And then they'll collect it from the government. Yeah. And they'll collect it from the government and it's not a loan. So they're not going to say, okay, well, we're going to give you, the, we're going to get advance you, but you're paying us, you know, three or 4% on it. Right. So it's not a loan. So you don't have to wait the six to 18 months. If once you qualify, they will fund it within 30 days. So, I mean, it's worth a shot to call them just to see if. Yeah. You know, I, I, look, if you I think qualify. everyone who held employees during that time period should file it. It's a no brainer. 
No brainer. No brainer. It'd be stupid not to. Yeah. I mean, again, it's free money, right? And if these guys can fund it within 30 days, so, and usually qualifying with them, it takes, I think he said it was like 36 hours. Like, come on, dude, three days. And yeah. then- But you have to have all your shit together. You have Just, to have your shit yeah, together. You're, yeah. you're sloppy, yeah. sloppy, floppy. You're not getting <laughs> qualifying yeah, 36 for hours. For sure. And that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. worth a call to call them and see what they can do for you and then yeah. just get it going. Okay, I mean, so how, where, how do you reach them? So uh, call this number. They know exactly to put the group chat people up front. Okay. So, I mean, they get hundreds of calls a day. So they have a dedicated line for group chat and it's 954-825-2950. And again, that's 954 825 Two nine five zero, and that you know, D on in, that's dedicated to group chat. So yeah. if people call in, they're going straight to the front of the line. Okay, so we'll, we'll make sure all the Cathy's who are interested call that li- number. Yeah, it's actually silly if you don't make the call and actually understand if you could just get money that yeah you didn't know existed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and- yeah for sure. So again, it's like if you had five plus W two employees in two thousand twenty in two thousand twenty one, I mean, it's worth giving them a call. Yeah. Well, there's no harm. Learn no. it. Yep. Amazing. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks, Hopefully uh, we, we find some money for some Cathy's. Yeah. They could buy some Lo Siento. <laughs> or, or give me some Ozempic. Yes. Hey, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Ozen- there's nothing like Ozempic. <laughs> <laughs> you could be rich and skinny. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. No, thank you. All right. Great interview. Um, as always, Ballin, you know, major friend of the pod. Uh, let's get into our winners, losers, and content and close out that way. D, who's your biggest winner for the last week? My winner is Bitcoin. Wow. Oh, finally. Wow. Look how, who how came long did around. that take? 12 years? My, this week, it's my winner. I think um, when the thing with crypto, which happened over the last kind of, call it five years, it got into like, basically what AI is right now. Like we know AI is important and we've said, you know, for, you know, on and off again regarding crypto, like where does it really You have to flush out the scams. Flush out the scams. Basically, crypto is so persona non grata anywhere in the world right now that it feels like the right time to actually be wanting to invest. And this is just me looking at just from objective stand, standpoint. And I look at Bitcoin and Ethereum. It looks like that's it. There's the only game in town. The rest are fading off. And quietly while, um, you know, Coinbase is getting hammered by the U.S. government, BlackRock and fucking Fidelity are launching Bitcoin ETFs. And obviously they know there's a percentage of their money that's going to want exposure. Same way they want exposure to venture. They want exposure to real estate. Bitcoin, they want, there's people that want now an exposure to the, to, to the kind of currency. And I still inherently do not believe in the technology of Bitcoin, but I do, I've always said I believe in it. I feel comfortable as a store of value. Wait, the technology... Is real because that's the reason it's the store value. No, but I'm saying that it, there's no actual use case for crypto. Nobody uses crypto for anything. So but for, I think but that, you believe in the technology I think as a store value. I believe value. in the yeah. idea that people well, believe that it has value but and that's te- all that matters. But the underpinning technology is what creates the value of Bitcoin because it is solving the double spend problem. It is a asset that only you can own and that you can transfer digitally. Yeah, but I so, don't believe in all of the the use cases of crypto that I do not believe in. So I think that's where the biggest opportunity right now is to invest because if you, the real crypto developers, I, I follow all of them on Twitter. I'm invested in a handful of funds and the literature I'm seeing is their heads down working and it's similar to AI. It's going to maybe take another seven, eight years. Like no one thought about AI in 2014. And in 2023, you're seeing it all over the place. But these people have been heads down for the last five, six years. I think it's going to happen a lot quicker. And it takes uh, a real technical mindset to understand what they're working on. And I think 
you're going to see some pretty large developments in crypto in the next yeah, three years. Yeah, I think years. they have to find a use case that, like, I think it's going to run AI. in the background. I think it's going to run in the background similar to the way AI is, right? No, AI, the AI breakout moment was a consumer facing thing. It was yeah, ChatGPT. Exactly. No, no, it's going to, there's going to yeah. be, I'm invested in a gaming company. My friend Amit is working that is on that is basically like a consumer gaming company that you're working on, you're playing, but you don't understand that blockchain's actually powering the whole thing. Yeah, that I can, I, I, so that that, I can get. So that's what is going to be the next wave. Okay. Fair. Either way, either way you called it a winner. I, I think it's taken a decade for you to call Bitcoin I believe a it as a story value. this was a big moment. That, that's all I believe That's what you need. You need, you need, yeah. the, you need the Joes to finally yeah. understand the story value. Then yeah. you just see it running in the background. Crypto is going to run in the background. That's when it becomes the use case. Yeah. Where it replaces the infrastructure of- I, do, I don't run. believe it's going to be the currency of mankind. That I do, I do not believe in. I don't think- uh, That's what I don't think Maxis a lot of, believe, think- No, that was 10 years ago. And yeah. I think it still is the currency in- uh, developing countries where you have 40 percent inflation like would you rather own bitcoin or a dollar i know in but they still currency? don't use it's not it's still not you they're not storing their value in bitcoin they they are People, collecting money you know bitcoin is actually i always said this that the if bitcoin only represented the value of the black market forget the economies that we all have to live in the black market you're talking drugs weapons gambling like all these black market uh activities it's still a multi-trillion dollar asset class. Yeah, that's fair. You're a black market guy. Yeah. I'm saying that's the downside. Okay. Yeah, sounds like you're supporting it, but it's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. Okay, uh, Anin, who's your winner? Taylor Swift. I mean, always. She's Forever man, and this, always the winner. She's honestly one of the most impressive artists, I think, of our generation, because Michael Jackson was before. Well, I think ever. I think it's fair to say Taylor Swift is one of the most impressive artists of all time. Yeah. Well, she's definitely of all time. I'm saying of our generation of like being alive, like we were kind of a little young for Michael, but um, just to kind of understand the importance of her. Yeah. So she's on this tour. She's going to be the most successful musician of all time by far. Yeah. Also, like, uh, I was way too young for Michael. So just don't let me into that same conversation. <laughs> yeah. You guys, you know, kind yeah, of I saw Michael. Time. Yeah, I saw Michael. Yeah, yeah, he no. was on TV. Me, was I wasn't like... even born yet. <laughs> <laughs> so Taylor Swift is on this like epic tour domestically right now. She's selling out, you know, 70, 80,000 seat stadiums around the country. She's doing four or five nights in a city. In LA, she had five nights sold out at SoFi, which broke the record that BTS had previously held. She just launched the sixth night. And the rumors are that she's doing anywhere from three to five million dollars a night in merch, separate from ticket sales. Yeah. And cities are basically making, she's so big and she's bringing so much interest Tourism. into whatever city that she's performing in that mayors are getting involved. So I can I tell you firsthand, I, w I had spent a few hours in Minneapolis the other night. Yeah. And my hotel... That she was there the night before and it was packed with people wearing Taylor Swift merch that had flown in to watch Taylor Swift perform. Also, I have She's a, like piece a mini of economy. I know a what friend of a friend that w is very well connected at one of these, um, I don't even remember, at one of these arenas, yeah. uh, not LA, Minnesota, yeah. something like that. And Taylor Swift, so what they did was they allowed people to come shop the merch the night before the concerts oh were there. God. And they oh did three million or three to five million <laughs> in that day before concert night of people just coming to buy merch. No show. Oh my God. So it's ungodly yeah. numbers. That's one, it, that's the night before like the three night stretch, you know? And then she's doing this domestic tour which ends sometime, I think in LA actually, might be okay. in LA. And, and, and then she's doing international, South America, Asia, Australia, Europe. So I think the light numbers are that she's going to gross over a billion. I would yeah. guess it's more. Yeah. And I don't know. That's in one year. One year. It's so <laughs> wild. I mean, can you imagine, you put out one album, you do one tour, what's she net? 
few hundred million. Yeah, a few hundred million. Probably. probably more. And what's, by all accounts, is she's the boss. Yeah. She's the CEO of Taylor Swift Inc. Yeah. So she's making all the calls. She's performing three and a half hours a night. Yeah. I don't know how she does it. She's it's, the goat. She's the goat. I think she is. She's, she's the goat. goat. Yeah, we got to accept it. And she's, she's like going through breakups through all this. She just yeah. broke up with her boyfriend. Yeah. You're fired. Get out of the tour. You're fired. I mean, Beat think it. about most most people. What is she, 30? I think early, like a little older. Early 30s. An early 30 person, male or female, they go through a breakup. They Their collapse. life shattered. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to do nine nights at SoFi. <laughs> yeah. She's like, thanks for the song idea. Beat it. Bitch. <laughs> little bitch. I just did seven million <laughs> <laughs> fucking merch. I mean, seven. I, I made more money. You're going to make it a whole life. I'm yeah, going to slap you with this money. While I was on this call breaking up with you, I just made $5 million. Because <laughs> it's the, the night before. But can yeah. she sustain it? Like, I mean, that's the actual thing. If like, if she's really going through all these breakups for all these years, how do you yeah. sustain being able to do three and a half hours a night? You know, but five out of ten these, nights. She's these guys are losers. She's just also, toys to her. Yeah, these like guys are losers. For her. Yeah, no yeah. big deal. And then think about like this is the first year we've talked about Taylor Swift in the last like five years. So she can go she now, take three years off, spend yeah. a year writing an album, do a year collecting five hundred million dollars. Yeah, go through seven more breakups. It's fine. Yeah, you don't even see her. Like she's one of those like Beyonce, Jay Z. I would say like. Massive celebrities, pop culture, like probably top I've of the top. I've only seen her once in real life. Did you really? Yeah. yeah. Where? Wow. At, um, what's that bar that used to be on Fairfax? Dime? No. Oh, uh, I know what you're talking about. No vacancy? Yeah. That, no. No. The, um, God. no name. No. no name. Oh, yeah. yeah. No it was like, you know, like a private bar situation. And guess who she was with? Who? Jay-Z and Beyonce. Wow. There you go. And that's my point. You see them. I mean, I've ran into them a handful of times. You see them out. You see photos of them. Yeah. Taylor Swift is gone for yeah, years. You, know. <laughs> you don't see an image of her. No, she's not spotted anywhere. I love it. Okay. Well, undeniable winner. Uh, my winner. Let me look at my list. Uh, oh, obviously. My winner is finally, I'm so happy to say this, golf. Wow. Mm. Finally, after all the trashing, after all the shit talking, you know, once there's these moments in the news that almost seems like people are listening to group chat and not saying that's what happened here, but it could be what happened here. The Ryder Cup, which is a massive um, event, right, where it's U.S. versus... Um, it's like countries, right? Yeah, you know, like U.S. No, versus... U.S. versus Europe. Europe. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. And yeah. Then it's just 1v1, you know, just... Head to head. Yeah. And it's really, it's one of the rowdy events, kind of like a w how waste management's rowdy. And the people come and they're all dressed up in, you know, US gear or whatever. And, um, and there's the teams and whatever. Really rowdy, great event. Uh, they have teamed up with, the Ryder Cup has teamed up with Rock Nation and more specifically DJ Khaled to, we don't know yet, bring, you know, some vibes to the event. And finally, I mean, this is just what we've been talking about. This feels like an yeah. amazing move. And it's happening. So I think someone at the PGA listens to the pod or got back to them. Yeah. There's I, no way it came this quickly. I, I think DJ We're the Khaled, only ones that are talking about golf. I yeah. agree. I think no, our marketing consulting, we can yeah. sell courses I, to corporate companies. For three people that are completely outside the golf community to talk about it as much as we have. Yeah. And we reach All right, PJ, invite us to the Ryder Cup. Yeah. yeah I know you're listening. Lunch. I'm taking credit. We yeah. we should all take credit. Pay for lunch, yeah. PGA Monahan. Lunch is on you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we know you just caught a bag. Did you see uh, the Saudis are buying tennis? Yeah. We didn't talk about that. Yeah. No. ATP. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 in. I talks love the way that I love that sentence. Did you see that the Saudis are buying tennis? They bought golf. <laughs> <laughs> now they're buying tennis. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay, I like it. Uh, uh, loser, who's your loser, D? My loser, you know, I'm turning on my guy, Zuck. I think Elon's going to beat his ass. <laughs> I saw, saw Elon clips, pounding huh? Lex. I saw him uh, pounding Lex Friedman. I'm yeah. all on Elon now. That weight, he's got him. So, the he's pound him. Can, I, can I quote something from Ozempic. my chat of yeah. people that follow all this shit with Lex Friedman, Rogan, uh, Zuck? Yeah. They said, here's a quote. This isn't my quote, so don't quote me. 
Lex Friedman swings from Elon's nuts. That was a stage photo. Okay. Well, maybe that's because Elon's so big that... <laughs> yeah, that's why he's swinging you know, from his nuts. Little Lex can just... All he can do is hang on to those nuts and swing. <laughs> I'm going with Elon. I think just the mass. Oh no, the mass I'm is sick. sorry. I think the mass is. Yeah. I think you just sit on him. Elon's he a could, big boy. Uh, South African. That there South might be Africans some got a little fight in them. You know, yeah. they've got he had a rough childhood. He said he got beat up a lot as a kid, so he knows he knows it's how to like take a punch. It's like the Eastern Europeans, like Jokic. Those guys, you, you know, can't they, fuck they, with they those guys. Rough childhood. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's, so that's a good one. I mean, I didn't expect to see. I think it's officially past the point where I expected it would go. Meaning, I think the chances of it actually happening are like 10%. But I didn't even expect to see footage or photos of Elon like on a fucking jujitsu mat. You know, yeah, I, mean, I think thinks- chances of happening are like 30, 40%. 50%. <laughs> yeah. They fight. just went through the roof. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Okay. That's a good one. I can one. see Zuck putting on 20 pounds yeah. just to get going. True. Uh, Anand, who's your loser? Pickleball. It's been the biggest phenomenon since the pandemic. What? That's like the Taylor now Swift of sports. All they do is win. Now we're seeing that estimated healthcare costs have increased by $400 million with the oh. trajectory of the growth of the sport. This has been my theory for the last 10 years. The moment I turned 30, Stopped all recreational sports. Yeah. All I do is work out and exercise because you play basketball, you play any of these sports, flag football. Yeah. yeah. ACLs must just be popping. ACL, like... Achilles, hips. Yeah. So it's pickleball, a disaster. pickleball's b- bigger problem has been around seniors because a lot of seniors play pickleball. Yeah. That and they're sense. the ones actually getting injured. And it's like whatever, three, four hundred million. Because they think it's like a safe activity. Yeah. That makes sense. It's like a sport for non-athletic people that they can, like yeah. the barrier to entry is just it's... low enough <laughs> that they can climb on over that thing and just blow out an ACL at fucking 62. I mean, one of our own from the group chat team tore his Achilles. Oh, yeah. yeah. What was he doing? Pick up yeah. basketball. Chenille. Wow. How old is he? Sorry, Chenille. He's... How old is he? Uh, 30s. 30s. Yeah. Can't be playing pickup I feel like basketball. literally yeah. on your 30th birthday, yeah. you should get a warning. Like your ACL, No, you should do like MCL, a retirement ceremony. No, when you're All 30- the sports you enjoy, just say, hey, you just hang everything up, yeah. hang your practice shirt up. I think everything. it should be illegal. I mean, yeah. a really good friend of ours, I, which I won't say because I don't know if he wants us to say it, took on jujitsu, started getting really active in his uh, late 30s and popped his Achilles in half not too long oh. ago. Yeah. Insurance companies shouldn't let people over 30 do anything. Yeah. Get your ass at home. I mean, there's a merch. Take Ozempic. Yeah, chill out. No need to work out. <laughs> Get some Shoot cardio this in, thing do in your some butt weights. once a week. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, that's a good one. Uh, my right. loser, I think I'll give it to um, LA, I guess. Um, I know I told you guys this in the chat, but I literally witnessed a murder uh, uh, two days ago. And, you know, the other, I told this story about six months ago where someone got shot outside of my uh, building and, but I didn't see the shooting. I didn't, I didn't hear the gunshots, so to speak. I just heard the commotion. And then I saw the guy laying on the ground and they were giving him CPR and stuff like this. This one, two nights ago, I'm in my office in this room and 10 PM right here on the computer. And I hear what sounds like a gunshot, but it was so close to the building that I wow. I, I heard like the um, almost like the ricochet or like the vibration off the building, and it sounded like like okay, did someone just shoot like at the building? And so I literally like ducked down, you know, like at my desk, and I went to go look out the window. I just heard a bunch of shots. I look out the window. There's two guys sprinting away. So I know that like, oh, those were gunshots. Because right? every time I think I hear gunshots, I look. It's like, is anyone running? Is anyone reacting? And these two guys were running as fast as they could away. And the one guy stops, looks like he's like taking a breather, and then just collapses and dies. He was the one who got shot oh. and right outside my window. I saw all of it. Not only did I see it. But because things are so fucking crazy here, right on my windowsill, I have binoculars. So I saw it really close. <laughs> oh my God. I, I binocularized what happened. 
And so was it gang violence? Was it a random murder? What was it? Nobody knows. Like even the news reports and the whatever, like you can tell it's kind of like, eh, who knows? Confusing. Like yeah. two guys got in an argument. Apparently someone said that they heard them arguing first. Um, I didn't see the shooters. The shooters ran the other way. I saw the two guys that were getting shot at. Um, but there was like a bike in the middle of the street. I don't know. There was obviously some sort of argument. They obviously don't know. They even said like, I don't know. The guy might have been homeless, but he... He didn't look homeless. He just, where he collapsed, he ran down the road and collapsed next to a homeless tent because there's homeless tents all down the road. And so they were like, oh, he was found near a tent. He might've been homeless. So you can tell there was no real investigation done, but it was literally right outside my window. Like it was nuts. It was so nuts. And like- That's scary. I hate to say it, but I, since I saw that last guy get shot, there's been probably two other nights where I just randomly heard gunshots, but there was just never any payoff. Like, I don't know what happened. And then that was literally right outside my window, uh, someone just getting murdered and collapsing. So, can I give you some advice? Move? Yeah. Is it move? <laughs> Time to move. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. I think that one put me over the edge. Yeah. I mean, because he, also, like, Kareen was out and Kareen literally came home. 10 minutes after that. And she didn't drive on that exact road, but like, you know, she was driving 20 feet, sorry, a hundred feet from where that happened. Um, and it's just wild, you know? Okay. And keep in mind, I just want to say it again. We used to walk these streets at 2 a.m. Yeah. every yeah. weekend. Yep. And All there day. was never a problem. Yeah. Anyway. Awesome. Pretty crazy. Uh, okay, D content recommendations. Yeah, so I was on a lot of planes last week. I got to finally watch some movies. Two movie recommendations: House Party, hilarious. Um, it was produced uh, by Spring Hill, which is LeBron's company. Love it. LeBron has a. Is it like, a remake of the old House Party? Yeah, it's hilarious. Oh, wow. It's so funny. And then Extraction Two could be the movie of the year. What's that? Who's in that? Um, I think. Chris Hemsworth. Oh, gosh. Unbelievable. A lot of violence, a lot of shooting. Who are they extracting? Um, I can't tell you. I cannot tell you, but it's unbelievable. Is it like aliens? It's, Is it war? No, no, no. It's just, you know, good old shoot, shoot, kill, kill. Got it. Just a like night your in neighborhood. Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a night on sunset. <laughs> okay. Got it. Uh, Anand? Sullivan Show of the Year, Swagger on Apple Plus. Really? It's loose, loosely based on Kevin Durant. I watched an episode because you were talking about it. it was Michael good. Katz, thank yeah. you for the rec. He, yeah. He's the one who put me on. I think it's two seasons in. I uh, watched the first episode last night. It's loosely based on Kevin Durant's upbringing. Rich but, Kleinman and Kevin Durant are executive producers on the show, but it's as if he was growing up in 2023. Yeah, because very present day. So it's uh -huh. like overtime, Instagram, and how like a young athlete that is from like a tough neighborhood is getting discovered and how they like get to oh. the next AU team. And you know, it's cool. It's a good show. It's great. So I think it's going to be a great show. There's also some sort of record. I was watching the NBA draft and like, I don't remember, but like three out of the five top picks didn't go to college. They were like G league yeah. or um, yeah. whatever. It's really The number one guy next year is not going to college. The Lithuanian kid, he's playing for the G league. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, they were all international or G League, I think. Uh, content, what was my, oh, um, I just saw that The Righteous Gemstones is back on uh, HBO. I don't know if you guys ever watched that. Danny McBride. Yeah, I, I watched a few episodes. It was funny. Yeah, so that's just a great show. I'm looking forward to watching it. That's really that easy. We'll see how that was, how that is this weekend. Okay. All right. There we have it. Anything else? Any shout outs? Oh, you have a shout out. I right, got Pete? a shout out. Yeah, yep. I got a shout out. So we here at Ghost are hiring for a director of product design that's going to, you know, really help uh, design the digital product experience of Ghost. We're looking for someone, you know, with pretty decent experience, seven to 10 years of experience. Uh, we're looking for people that come from companies like Apple, Google, Meta, Amazon and really transform from a large company to a tech startup. And, you know, if you have marketplace or retail tech experience, that's also a plus. So if you are interested in joining the ghost team, 
head over to ghst.io slash careers as we are actively looking to hire for that position. Jay Powell's not going to like that. Uh oh! No, no, no! Do I have, have to cut someone? You have to you fire have to cut some three people. people to gain one. I think <laughs> that's J Pal's rule. Oh my god! And then we have a shout out from the Discord, um, where uh, um, Jake, who is an active member in the Chatty Cathy Club, uh, he's announcing that he's now uh, donation donor relations coordinator at Gigi's Playhouse, uh, which is a Down Syndrome Achievement Center. And so uh, last year alone, they served 25,000 family with Down syndrome across 58 locations in the United States and 87 countries. They have a 2023 national golf outing. There you go. Nice. And then they have a GG Fit acceptance challenge in 2024. Uh, if you're interested in joining and changing perceptions and promoting acceptance, please email us at guy, G-U-Y dot Vaccaro, V-A-C-C-A-R-O, at Gigi's Playhouse.org. That's G I G I S Playhouse.org. So, and if you haven't, big shout out to the Chatty Cathy Club. It's crazy. Any hour of the night, people are talking, people all over the world are in there. It is so booming. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. So, if you have not joined, head over to chattycathyclub.com, pick up a membership, join the Discord. It's really fun. I'm sending articles all day. Yeah, a lot of content, a lot of good conversation. And people are quick Yeah, with news. It's fun. Yeah. Okay. Love it. All right. There you have it. Everyone have a great rest of your week. Have a great long weekend. We got an ungodly long weekend. I didn't realize. Yeah. <laughs> Man. I America, like bro. Yeah, we're stocking up America. on our long weekends this year. Um, yeah. so everyone have a great fourth. Uh, we don't even know when we'll be back. Who knows? I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. What night? Tuesday night? It's that fourth night. Yeah. yeah. No. It's a Wednesday. Wednesday. Back okay. Wednesday. Well, we'll Damn, figure it out. Big. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. Everyone have a great weekend. Thanks for listening. Mm, God bless America. 